one not so long ago. The Haida lived amongst the natural and supernatural beings of the sea, sky, and forest in a world that provided all their needs. Every new season brought gifts from the plants and animals of food, medicine, and adventure. Their archipelago, the top of an ancient volcanic mountain range, is lush with a rainforest born out of temperate temperatures. Wind laden with moisture sweeps in from the ocean, meets the island's mountains, and blesses it with rain. The moss-covered forest is canopied with massive trees of spruce, hemlock, and cedar. The red cedar trees were fashioned into canoes spanning up to 60 feet. At o as ocean-going people, they journeyed beyond their home waters into the Pacific and across the turbulent Hecate Strait that separates the Haida from a, mount, a mountain, a mainland coast crowded with islands, fjords, and river outlets. Clinket, Simpsian, Helsic, and, and Salish speaking people were neighbors on this rugged coastline. The massive canoes provided the Haida an elegant means to travel in trade for items not found on their island halibut, cod, potatoes, seaweed, and spruce root woven objects were amongst the articles that bar they bartered with. The finely carved canoes were also sought after by mainland traders. The islands of Haida Gwaii were abundant providers and Haida had a good, held a good bargaining position in any trade they entered. In early spring, just around the time, when the winter supply of dried fish reserves emptied, people converged at the mouth of the Nass River on the mainland from the spring run of oligans. The Simpsian pressed and fermented the much sought after oligan grease. Tribes from in inland and coastal communities would travel to trade for the liquid gold of the Simpsian. That was when the Haida traveled across the channel to trade <clears throat> in their huge canoes. Oligan oil, inland plants and hides, as well as mountain goat wool were brought back to Haida Gwaii. The mountain goat wool and sinew was used in garment construction. Women of prestige fashioned valuable wool into garments with designs of distinction. Designs were passed down from generation to generation for thousands of years by master artists to apprentices, from uncle to nephew, from mother to daughter. Storytellers kept alive primordial adventures in tales of ancestral times set in supernatural realms. These stories, as well as increasing conquests and adventures, renewed the artist's inspiration. The inherent understanding of the symbolism within the art crossed beyond the barriers of spoken languages within the regions of the Pacific Rim cultures. Undulating ribbons of lines surrounded resultant forms created the dynamic positive and negative areas of the formline art style of the Pacific Northwest Coast people. This art is dictated by rules of style, but individual artists within clans, families, and villages retain distinguishing approaches in its execution. Haida art is recognized by its careful use of space. The balance of negative and positive areas fit the object form in a manner that gives the design an appearance of enclosed energy. This is represented in the dynamic tension between background and foreground, there is never wasted space or an empty place within the field of design. The taut heighted style is also predominantly bilateral. This often produces an optical multidimensional work of art, such as two side faces becoming a completed frontal expression. Faces and beams emerged from the continued reflection of yin and yang of Haida line and space. This metamorphosis within the mind of the observers produced, 
perceived transformations, a concept in, so important in the beliefs of the ancestors. Ceremonial dress was an extension of the wearer's body, just as the tattoos identified the person in the multi-cosmos of the Haida universe. Robes acted as transmuting garments between the natural and supernatural worlds. In mythical times, apparel assisted the ancestors in their journeys to the water, sky, and forest communities. Creatures of the natural world appeared as people within their own realms. Haida traveled to their kingdoms by wearing garments made from their skins. Donning a robe of eagle feathers allowed you to fly into the sky and communicate with the eagle people. Dressed in salmon skin, you could swim the rivers. In the beginning, Raven Traveling transformed himself many times, enabling him to trick, capture, and create elements that are retained in the world of today. Ancient chief's robes of geometric patterns, now coined Raven's Tail, were made entirely of mountain goat wool. White, black, and yellow wefts were twined, resembling the geometric designs put into spruce root hats and basketry. They were made on very simple looms, consisting of a bar drilled with holes that spanned between two support posts. From the bar, thigh spun warps of pure mountain goat wool was suspended. <clears throat> the complex geometric designs emerged with the succession of each row. The rectangular robes were topped with fur and surrounded with heavy fringe. These were the very early styles of chief's robes. Later, the Nahin form line robes evolved. They employed techniques that were revolutionary to the standard weaving techniques that preceded it. The earliest woven form line designs were made within shaman regalia. They assisted the shaman in channeling spirit helpers during his responsibility in calming the weather, healing the sick, and traveling to the kingdom of other realms. The shaman painted the patterns that came to him in visions. Specialized weavers were entrusted in the creation of these designs on woven regalia. The highly complex, conventional, and, symbol and symbolic form line designs of the Nahin chief's robes are the zenith of classic Haida art style. Robes made and collected from Haida territory exhibit the every, the everything in its place and no wasted space method of Haida design placement. Men painted the stylized form line designs into cedar planks and women translated them into the matrix of the robes, vertical warp and horizontal wefts. Whale, thunderbird, seabird, sea bear, and the one in the sea were depicted on the Nahin robes, just like they were on the totem poles that peppered their villages and fronted their big homes. These designs were made to order, to honor and appease powerful entities of the supernatural. Raven and Eagle are the moities of the Haida. Elite members of the Eagle clan could perform rites of passage such as lip and ear piercing and tattooing for Raven youth and Ravens would respond in turn. Eagles would marry Ravens. Reciprocal roles were maintained within families as well as clans. In times of war, Haida women would weave two war belts. These belts were made from whale sinew. Figures of future war captives were worked into the designs of the belts. Women created everyday wear fashioned from yellow and red cedar bark. The cedar trees were important resources for all of the cultural material of the Haida. The massive canoes, houses, and memorial poles, as well as hunting and carving tools cooking and eating utensils, storage boxes, basketry, cordage, drums, dance regalia, rattles, whistles, and clothing were amongst the infinite things created from the trees, bark, and wood. The inner cadmium cedar bark layer was harvested in the spring during the time when the salmonberry blossoms emerged. Women gathered the bark from straight trees, giving thanks and promising the trees that they would transform their bark into the useful items <clears throat> that they would wear. 
Later in their large cedar planked homes, they would continue to separate the layers of cadmium bark to fine and narrow strips for plating and twining household items. Bark was intended for clothing construction. It was dried and then pounded into the inner bark layers, separated into soft and fluffy material and woven into robes, skirts, and canoe capes. These cedar garments were perfect material for the temperate northwest coast rainforest. The Haida moved for, through their world wrapped in the weaving arts of women. Designs placed on their garments created a mantle that protected, strengthened, and proclaimed who they were and where they fit into the North Pacific coast, land, and sea. Highly organized social tenants determined the activities and roles of individuals within the clan-dominated societies. Ruling, fishing, hunting, carving, weaving, trading, and spirit communication roles all were dictated by matrilineal hereditary past to future generations. Every child's part was preordained and every person had a place to fit into the composition of each village. This was the nation, the crew of the Spanish frigate Santiago met on July 20th, 1774 at Northern Haida Gwaii. The captain, Juan Perez, conveyed the following estimation of the Haida in a letter to his commander in New Spain. Presently, I found a large multitude of Indians who came out to meet me in their canoes. They were a beautiful people indeed. The world had much to learn of the Haida, and they had much to learn from the civilization beyond their world. From the time of these early encounters forward, the dynamic and complete Haida world, shared with nature and spirit, would change forever.